Theodore Sedgwick May 9, 1746, to January 24, 1813, was an American attorney, politician and jurist, who served in elected state government and as a delegate to the Continental Congress, a U.S. representative, and a United States Senator from Massachusetts. He served as the fourth Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. He was appointed to the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court in 1802 and served there the rest of his life. <laughs> Early life and education Born in West Hartford, Connecticut, Sedgwick was the son of Benjamin Sedgwick his paternal immigrant ancestor Major General Robert Sedgwick arrived in 1636 in the Massachusetts Bay Colony. As part of the Great Migration, Sedgwick attended Yale College, where he studied theology and law. He did not graduate, but went on to study law, Red Law, under the attorney Mark Hopkins of Great Barrington. Hopkins was the grandfather of the Mark Hopkins who later became president of Williams College. Early career Sedgwick was admitted to the bar in 1766 and commenced practice in Great Barrington, Massachusetts. Among the prospective attorneys who learned the law in his office was Stephen Jacob, who later served on the Vermont Supreme Court. He moved to Sheffield. During the American Revolutionary War, he served in the Continental Army as a major, and took part in the expedition to Canada and the Battle of White Plains in 1776. Topic. Freedom suit As a relatively young lawyer, Sedgwick and Tapping Reeve pleaded the case of Brahm and Bett v. Ashley 1781, an early «freedom suit» in county court for the slaves Elizabeth Freeman known as Bett and Brahm. Bett was a black slave who had fled from her master, Colonel John Ashley of Sheffield, Massachusetts, because of cruel treatment by his wife. Brahm joined her in suing for freedom from the Ashleys. The attorneys challenged their enslavement under the new state constitution of 1780, which held that, "...all men are born free and equal." The jury agreed and ruled that Bett and Brahm were free. The decision was upheld on appeal by the state Supreme Court. Bett marked her freedom by taking the name of Elizabeth Freeman, and she chose to work for wages at the Sedgwick household, where she helped rear their several children. She worked there for much of the rest of her life, buying a separate house for her and her daughter after the Sedgwick children were grown. After Freeman's death, the Sedgwicks buried her at Stockbridge Cemetery in the Sedgwick Pie, the family plot. The family marked Freeman's grave with an inscribed monument, and it is beside that of their fourth child, writer Catherine Maria. <laughs> Political career A Federalist, Sedgwick began his political career in 1780 as a delegate to the Continental Congress. He was elected as representative to the State House, and then as State Senator. He was a charter member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 1780. In 1789, Sedgwick was elected as representative to Congress from Massachusetts' 1st Congressional District, and over time also represented Massachusetts' 2nd District, serving until 1796. That year he was elected to the United States Senate, and served until 1799. In 1799 he was re-elected as a representative, this time from the 4th District, and was elected the 5th Speaker of the House, serving until March 1801. In 1802, Sedgwick was appointed a Justice of the Supreme Judicial Court of Massachusetts. He held this position until his death. Marriages and family Around 1767, Sedgwick married Elizabeth Eliza Mason, the daughter of a deacon from Franklin, Connecticut. In 1771, Sedgwick contracted smallpox which he passed on to his wife who was then pregnant with the couple's first child. She died of the disease on April 12, 1771 while eight months pregnant. Sedgwick married a second time on April 17, 1774 to Pamela Dwight of the New England Dwight family. She was the daughter of Brigadier General Joseph Dwight of Great Barrington and his second wife, the widow Abigail Williams Sargent. 
Abigail was the daughter of Colonel Ephraim Williams, and half-sister of Ephraim Williams, Jr., the founder of Williams College. The Sedgwicks had ten children, three of which died within a year of birth, reflecting the high infant mortality rate of the time. They were Elizabeth Mason Sedgwick, April 30, 1775 to October 15, 1827. A child died at birth on March 27, 1777. Francis Pamela Sedgwick, May 6, 1778 to October 15, 1827. Theodore Sedgwick II, December 9, 1780, 1839, married children's book author Susan Ann Livingston. Their son Theodore Sedgwick was a lawyer and author. Catherine Sedgwick, July 11, 1782 to March 3, 1783. Henry Dwight Sedgwick, April 18, 1784 to March 1, 1785. Henry Dwight Sedgwick, September 22, 1785 to December 23, 1831. His grandson was a lawyer and an author. Henry Dwight Sedgwick III. Robert Sedgwick, June 6, 1787 to September 2, 1841, was a lawyer who married Elizabeth Dana Ellery, granddaughter of William Ellery, a signer of the Declaration of Independence. Catherine Maria Sedgwick, December 28, 1789 to July 31, 1876, became one of the first noted female writers in the United States. Charles Sedgwick, December 15, 1791 to August 3, 1856, became clerk of the Massachusetts Supreme Court. His grandson was anatomist Charles Sedgwick Minot. During the marriage, Sedgwick frequently left his wife and children at their home in Stockbridge, Massachusetts, while he focused on building his political career. His frequent absences, coupled with the death of three children and the strain of caring for numerous children albeit with the help of her mother and many servants and slaves, caused Pamela's physical and mental health to decline. After Pamela's mother died in February 1791, she developed depression and began exhibiting signs of hypomania. She was institutionalized for a time in December 1795, but her physical and mental health continued to decline in the years following her release. She committed suicide by consuming poison on September 20, 1807. After Pamela's death, Sedgwick married his third wife Penelope Russell on November 7, 1808. The two remained married until Sedgwick's death in 1813. <laughs> death While on his death bed, Sedgwick converted to Unitarianism with his daughter Catherine Maria and William Ellery Channing in attendance. On January 24, 1813, Sedgwick died in Boston, Massachusetts at the age of 66. He was buried in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. His grave is at the center of the Sedgwick Pie. <laughs> Modern day relatives Theodore Sedgwick is the fourth great-grandfather of actress Kira Sedgwick. See also Agrippa Hull Liberty's Kids, Episode 37